Hello and good evening everyone. Welcome to the first skill enhancement workshop by University of Sterling. My name is Jason and I head the admissions and the marketing department at University of Sterling Russell Kema campus. We are happy to announce that we have planned series of skill enhancement workshop which will be course specific for all the students of different grades, different schools and different curriculums. For more information on our skin, skill enhancement workshop, you can visit our, work, our website, stir.ae, which will give you more information about each and every course specific workshops. Before we move forward with the workshop, I would give you a small brief introduction about University of Sterling, our rankings, and the courses that we offer in our Russell Kema campus. In the next slide, So University of Sterling is a public university by nature. Therefore, our accreditation, our recognition and our global outreach are of highest standards. Therefore, when you graduate with a degree from University of Sterling, you carry the brand name of Sterling along with you. University of Sterling is home to 15,000 500 students and we offer courses in natural sciences, health sciences, business, accounting, computing, as well as nursing. We are ranked 485 amongst 500,000 universities in the world as per QS World Ranking and constantly ranked inside top 20 by various publications, magazines, newspapers and articles. In our Russell Kema campus, we offer both UG and PG courses. At the UG level, we offer courses in accounting, business management, computing and software engineering. And at our postgraduate level, we offer courses in finance, big data and financial technology. Before we move to the next slide, I would like to take this moment to announce that we are accepting applications for September 21 intake. Students who register during this period of time would be availing a direct 50 percentage scholarship on the tuition fees yearly. This scholarship is only applicable for students who register early and submit their application before the end of February. For more details, you can write to the admission department or you can call the admission department, the details of which will be shared in the upcoming slides and at the end of the sessions. Ms. Lucine, we can go to the next slide. In the next slide, we would be talking about why you can choose University of Sterling UA campus. So uh, the first reason why you need to choose University of Sterling our UA campus is our five star world ranking. So we are constantly rated five stars by the QS for teaching, quality education, student experience and placements. Our second most powerful characteristics is our placements we place 97 percentage of our graduating students every year. For that, we have started and we have already in place skill enhancement workshops. We have work readiness programs as well as communication skills and personality enhancement skills for the students who have enrolled with us. These programs will start from the second year when you are studying a particular course at University of Sterling Russell Kema campus. We have excellent network with the industry. We have corporate sponsorships from Siemens, IBM, Microsoft, Rack Ceramics, etc. 
we provide placement assistance to our final year graduating students and we make sure that they are having an opportunity to be placed by at least two or three companies. We also provide the opportunity for the students to study in our UK campus. But there are certain terms and conditions which the students need to fulfill in terms of their annual GPA as well as they their behavior with the faculty members. We provide transportation facilities. We also provide various scholarships option, one of which I just mentioned the early registration. There is academic merit scholarships as well as there are financial aids for the students. So uh, on that note, I would like to conclude my part for today and our Department of Computing would take forward the session who have come up with an excellent workshop which engages the students and we hope that you will be gaining something fruitful out of this workshop. And students will be availing e-certificates who attend all the workshops conducted by the Department of Computing or any other department of ours. So you will be awarded with e-certificate from University of Stirling. So on that note, thank you. Uh, Ms. Archana, over to you. Thank you, Jason, for such a lovely introduction of the university and uh, for the lovely words about the university, which are absolutely true. Uh, moving on to the Department of Computing now, I am Archana and I head the Department of Computing and we have put together this series of workshop for uh, all the students and this skill enhancement series basically offer uh, various futuristic skills which are required for the career development and now you are at that part or that phase of your life where you need to make some decisions for yourself for your career so in order uh, to facilitate to take informed decision and uh, to make your career choices wisely so that is the main idea behind uh, putting all the series of workshops in different domains together right so uh, as long as far as Department of Computing uh, workshop series is concerned, it's divided into three, three workshops. Workshop one, which is today, is about machine learning using uh, Python. And uh, after this, we will be doing another workshop, which is about big data, working with big data. And uh, third and final workshop is about artificial intelligence wherein uh, we will show you a demonstration of how to uh, create chatbots. All right. And uh, all the students will get the certificate, but you have to attend all three workshops. The attendance for all three workshops is mandatory. We will also share a feedback form, feedback link with you in between. And uh, please feel free to give your uh, valuable feedback to us. We are also recording this session. Uh, for everyone, please note we are recording this session and we will share the recording with everyone later so that you can look into the materials also uh, whenever uh, you are free and try to recreate the applications or try to use uh, some of the code and all that which you will be shown today. All right. So today's workshop one uh, machine learning using Python application will be done by uh, Miss Lucine, who is a faculty uh, in Department of Computing. All right. Uh, you have access to chat box, so feel free to drop any questions in between. If you have Miss Lucine will be busy because she will be talking, but there are other moderators. There is Miss Yashi Singh and uh, Ms. Preeta and I am also here. We will be moderating the session and whatever questions you have, feel free to put them in the chat box. We will be happy to answer your questions. Uh, and also if you have any specific questions you can uh, for Ms. Lucene, you can ask those questions at the end of the session as well. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, Ms. Lucene, over to you. OK, uh, thank you, Mom. Uh, thank you, Jason. Uh, I'm Lucine Garibian. I've been uh, teaching a core area of software engineering and software development for more than 10 years. Uh, today we are going to talk about machine learning using Python. Okay, uh, before starting, uh, have you ever asked yourself when you open YouTube, 
uh, how YouTube can guess which videos you are uh, going to watch. You, sometimes you are surprised that, yes, I love this song, how YouTube uh, knows that. Or for example, when you open Amazon, you may also surprise that you like those kinds of uh, uh, shirts or shoes or those colors. So uh, in fact, uh, this is the idea of machine learning. Okay, so uh, machine learning uh, is uh, the concept that we are talking about today, and we are going to use Python to create uh, a model that uh, will uh, predict, uh, 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 we are going to uh, Uh, Lucine, you're mute. You've got mute. Okay, so the objective today is uh, introduction to machine learning, uh, the application and examples of machine learning, machine learning types, setting up the environment, that we are going to use to create our model, introduction to Python programming, uh, Python uh, libraries for machine learning, and machine learning steps, and we are going to create a, a demo uh, using Python. Okay, at the end, you are free to ask any questions that you like. So let's start. What is machine learning? Machine learning is a field of artificial intelligence. It's one of the trendiest topics nowadays, and it's going to have lots of application in the future. Okay, for example, uh, if I asked you to create a program that will scan an image, and this program should guess this image is a cat or a dog, Okay, imagine yourself that you are going to create this program using the traditional techniques in programming. So it will be very complex. You are going to search uh, and to write rules to search for colors, for specific curves, for specific edges to be able to predict the next image. Okay, so uh, it's not the end of the story. What if I gave you then uh, black and white color and I ask you is it a cat or a dog so at this time your uh, program will not work you are going to rewrite the rules to be able to guess this image is uh, if it is a cat or a dog and or what if I gave you an image from a different angle that you haven't been predicted before so Solving these kind of problems using the traditional techniques in programming sometimes will be very complex and other times will be impossible. So machine learning is a technique to solve these kinds of problems. Okay, and here is an example how machine learning works. Okay, first we create a model. When we create a model, we are going to use uh, some of um, the implemented methods. Okay, after creating a model, we fed our model with lots and lots of data, sometimes thousands, sometimes tens of thousands, or sometimes millions of data. That depends upon the, prog uh, the problem that we are going to solve, and that depends upon the data itself, okay? So for example, here we are going to create a model that will predict if uh, the input image is a cat uh, or a dog. So we uh, fed our uh, uh, model or we uh, let it take a lot of images which are uh, cats and dogs and the, uh, the input should be labeled, means that uh, each image should be known that it is an, a cat or a dog, then our model will learn. We learn patterns from this input data. And this learning, those patterns, will let him uh, next uh, predict for a new image uh, if it is a cat or a dog. So this is the basic idea of machine learning.
But this is not the only kind of problem that machine learning can solve. There are many, many other examples and applications that machine learning can solve. Uh, uh, image and speech recognition, self-driving cars, robotics, forecasting stock market trends, medical diagnosis. So machine learning is everywhere. And as I told you before, it's going to have lots of applications in the future. So as you see, machine learning is a very, very important topic. OK. Types of machine learning. We have three types of machine learning supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. Regarding supervised learning, it is the type that we are going to focus on today. We are going to create a model using supervised learning. But let's uh, take a, a small idea about each one of those types. OK, supervised learning. In supervised learning, we fed our model with a labeled input. What that means? For example, uh, if your model is going to predict if an image is a cat or a dog, we uh, uh, we give him lots of images uh, which are labeled. That means each image uh, should be able if it is a cat or a dog. OK, as the example that we talked about it previously. So our model then uh, will learn patterns from this input and then Later, he will be able to predict if a new image is a cat or a dog. OK, so this is the first type of machine learning, the supervised learning. So in the supervised learning, uh, uh, the uh, training data contains the input and correct answers, which is the labels from the data of the computer should be able to learn the patterns. So here our model will teach himself OK, from the data that he will get for that, it's called machine learning. Our model is learning from the data that he is getting. OK, the second type of machine learning and supervised learning in unsupervised learning. The input data is unlabeled, so the input is unlabeled data. OK. Why we use unsupervised learning? Unsupervised learning, uh, it will uh, at the end uh, give rules, pattern, summary. So you will get a summary of the data, information about this data, rules about this data. So this is about unsupervised learning. The third kind of machine learning is reinforcement learning. So in reinforcement learning, the computer agent is learned which is the best move he is going to take next. OK, so uh, there are moves or actions should be taken by the computer agent, but he will be trained which one would be identical. How that will happen? Uh, for example, the agent will take an action in an environment Let's say an environment could be a computer uh, game or let's say a chessboard, a very simple example. Let's say that the computer agent is going to take an action or move in, in this chessboard. OK, so depending on this move, depending on this move, he may get a reward that depends on if this move will let him be closer to the desired objective. So if this move will make the computer agent closer to uh, his aim or to the objectives, he will get a reward. OK, so after many iterations, the computer agent will start to learn which move will be the best. So that exactly what happened in computer games. So uh, he is uh, learning which move should be taken so he can maximize the reward. He will get more reward depending on the next move he is going to take. OK, so those are the three kinds of machine learning. OK, as I told you before, 
to create a machine learning model, we are going to use Python programming language. Okay. And uh, the ideal environment for creating machine uh, uh, machine learning uh, models or projects is Jupyter Notebook. Okay. And uh, to install Jupyter Notebook, we are going to install Anaconda platform. Okay. And to install Anaconda platform, I hope that you already installed it. If you did not install it yet, here is a link. If you open this link at the bottom of the web page, you are going to so you have to choose the one uh, which is suitable with your operating system. Okay, so after installing Anaconda, you can start using Jupyter. Okay, so let's start using Jupyter. If you already installed it, you can work with me. So here, if you already uh, installed Anaconda, you can write here if you are using Windows Anaconda. So, so then you can launch Anaconda. Inside Anaconda, what you can see here, lots of environments, we are going to choose Jupyter. Okay, so once we click on launch, what will happen? It will open in a browser. OK, so this is the Jupyter dashboard, as you see here, as you see here, this is the browser and. Here is localhost, this is the port and this is the Jupyter dashboard. OK, what we are going to do now, we are going to create a Jupyter notebook. Uh, be careful when you create a Jupyter uh, notebook first be careful about the location where you are going to create Jupyter uh, notebook so first you have to choose here the folder where you are going to create your first Jupyter no notebook as you see here we are in home directory we can here go for example to desktop documents download of course on your own machine you are going to see other folders so for example I will go here to desktop okay then I will create my first Jupyter no uh, notebook from this button, Jupyter, uh, Python 3, sorry. Okay, so as you see, uh, here is the first uh, Python net, uh, Jupyter notebook. It's untitled, so directly I can give it uh, another name. I will name it Hello World. Okay. So this is my first uh, Jupyter notebook. Okay. Okay. What I can do now? I can start write a statement. Statement in Python programming language. Uh, the first statement that I'm going to write is just output something on the screen. We can output something on the screen using the print function. So print, then inside two uh, parentheses, we can pass the message that we are going to output. Uh, because we are going to output message, which is a string, so we have to surround it with two double quotation or two single quotations the both will work. So I will say hello world. Okay. So how I can run my project? Um, we have many ways. The first way is clicking on the run button here. Okay. When you click on the run button here, what will happen? It will execute our statement as you see here hello world okay second thing it will uh, give you a new cell under the cell okay to continue writing your code you can continue writing your code here in the new cell or in the same cell okay you can just try, uh, click on enter and you continue uh, writing your statement okay but each time as you see here uh, 
uh, whenever you write here code and click on run, it will give you a, a new set. So if you want, for example, Want to run your project without going to a new cell, you just click Control Enter. So Control Enter will run your project without adding a new cell. Okay, so let's continue. What we also can do uh, in a programming language. I think if most of you uh, uh, know a programming language, maybe if if not Python, maybe they know another programming language. So this part of the workshop will be uh, familiar to all of you. Uh, but also some of you who don't know any programming language, so maybe uh, we can't go directly creating model be before uh, taking an idea of what is a programming language or what statement that can I write, okay? So first of all, uh, of course, the first concept you can learn when you learn a programming language is uh, the variables. Okay, so what is the variable? The variable is named location in RAM where data is stored. We can imagine a variable like a box, like a labeled box. The label of the box is the name of the variable and the content of the box is the value of the variable. So whenever you need the variable, you call the, the label, the, the label of the box. And what will happen, you will get the value, which is the content of the box. Okay, maybe you, it, it, we should try it to understand it more. So how to define variables in Python? Very, very easy. Just directly write the name of the variable. Okay, for example, I will create a, a variable that includes my name. Okay, so just name equal then between two uh, double quotations or single, uh, single quotes, I can directly write my name. Yes, this is how we create a variable and assign value to this variable. Maybe if you know other programming language, uh, you will see some differences because maybe in another programming language, you have to define the data type of this variable. For example, you have to mention that this variable is a string, or if you are uh, going to define a variable which is from other data type, you are going to to, to say this data type, if it's integer, if it's float, if it is Boolean. So in Python, directly mention the name and the value. And Python will know from the value, the data type of the variable. Let's uh, also uh, declare another variable, for example, age. Okay, so age, for example, uh, 38, okay? So uh, if we executed, nothing will happen. Why? Because I already, uh, I only defined a variable, but I did not output the value of this variable uh, on the screen. So for that, I can't see anything, but, but uh, already there are two variables in run and then the first variable name is name and the second variable name is age and those are the contents of those variables okay uh, let's output uh, the the variable that called name let's see the content of it on the screen so again we can use the print function okay but at this time if i use the single quotes, what will happen? What you think will happen? Lucien Garibian will be appeared or not? What do you think? Okay, no, the content of the variable will not appear because when you pass in the print function single quotes 
or double quotes, he will understand it as a series of characters. He will not understand that you need to output the content of the variable name. So in this case, if you want to output or use the content of the variable, you have to put the name of the variable without any single quotes or double quotations. So control enter again. Now I have Lucien Garibian. OK, and I have included many examples for you because I know during this workshop we will not be able to cover everything. I have included lots of in exa examples in a file called <coughs> uh, Python introduction. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to share with you this rare file and uh, uh, I will share it with you. Now, so please download it and e extract it on uh, your dos uh, desktop or uh, uh, any other folder because we are going to use it. OK. <clears throat> Uh, I think I don't have permission to send it. OK, uh, Sir Ajay, can I send it to you? Then you can send it in the chat box to the students. Sure, I'll, sure do, that. I'll do that. OK, just give me one minute. Okay, so again, as I told you before, this includes uh, some examples that will help you. So in case we did not have time to cover everything, at least you can check them alone. Of course, uh, besides the examples, uh, okay, I sent it already, Sir Ajay, so you can share it with the students. OK, so. <clears throat> so let's open this file. OK, how you open. A Jupyter file. You directly can go to the location of this file and click on it. This is one of the ways. So, for example, it's included in the files folder on the desktop because after you extract it, it will be a folder called files. And inside this files folder, you are going to see <coughs> a Python introduction that includes the basic statements in uh, Python. And you are going to see a project one and a project two that we are going to create today, which is the model that we are going to create today. And also you are going to see a CSV file. The CSV file is the file that includes data that we are going to fit our model with it. If you remember, we said that uh, the machine learning uh, uh, project or model uh, will get a lot of input of data to learn, OK? So this is the input. This is the data that we are going to fit our model with it. So you are going to see those. Please download them whenever you have them and uh, uh, extract them on your desktop or document or any other folder. Sir Ajay, I sent it to you uh, via email. OK. So let's continue. So here files, uh, Python introduction. OK, so as you see here in each cell, in each cell, I put some 
statements, basic statements. Of course, if we want to talk about Python, it will take too much time, many sessions we need. So for that, I only included the basic statement that we are going to use in our model. OK, <clears throat> so here, for example, how to print hello world. By the way, this is a comment. How we can uh, uh, make a statement or line a comment, we just uh, put the hash symbol at the beginning of it, or for example, control slash from the keyboard. Control slash from the keyboard will make it comment or will uncomment it. So it's very useful to use shortcuts always. So here are the variables, okay? Output the variables, for example. So as you see here, to output the variables, we pass the name of the variable. As you see here, if I want to output uh, the variable and uh, uh, a sentence as the, uh, at the same time, what I have to do, this is, for example, my uh, sentence. Then this is the variable. I have to use the concatenation symbol. The concatenation operator is the plus symbol. So just put this concatenation. So as you see here, my name is Lucine Garibian. OK, so this is a string and this is the variable and this is the concatenation operator. OK, uh, here, for example, I want to output my age as well, but what you can see, I am using another function, str. Why? Because age is an integer, which is number. So I'm concatenating an integer with a string, and that uh, is not allowed in Python. So I'm converting it to string. OK, so as you see here, run. Uh, OK. So for that, uh, here uh, the name uh, has not been uh, defined. I will come back to it, as you see. OK, here, for example, if we are going to take about if a statement, if a statement is a conditional statement, for example, um, uh, why we use conditional statement in programming, in programming, uh, you need to execute a block of code if a condition is met. Uh, so that could be done using a conditional statement. And one of those statements is if a statement. So as you see here, if a statement, we have, for example, two variables. And uh, uh, then uh, those two variables, then I'm checking here the value of y if it is greater than x, OK? So uh, if it's greater than x, so of course here you have to be careful with the syntax that we are going to put here a colon. We have to put here a colon. Maybe you are going to see in other programming languages, maybe it would be curly uh, braces. So here a colon. And the good thing about Python, just he will know that this statement belongs to this block because it's indented. So this indentation means that this statement belongs to this if statement. OK, OK, so elif means if this condition has not been met and another condition is met. OK, so if, for example, y was not greater than x and another condition met, which is y less than x, do this another statement. So output that y is smaller than x. OK, so as you see here, because this is indented, so uh, this is belongs to elif statement. I can also write another statement that belongs to this elif block. That means it will also be executed if this condition is met. OK, so uh, else. At the end of if a statement, if you want to execute a block of code, if 
none of the above conditions is made so you can use the s statement and you can put a statement here or a couple of statements uh, and you define that by uh, uh, indenting the statements so they will belong to the else block. Okay, so as you see here, the output is y is greater than x. Okay, so the output here, y is greater than x. Okay, so uh, here also the for loop. So uh, also, in programming languages, uh, we have to learn about loops, which is uh, executing a, a block of code multiple times. So here also, uh, for i in range 1 to 10, it will be execute uh, 9 times because 10 will not be counted. So it will execute from 1 until the number that comes before 10. And here is also a while loop. And here is also the list. OK, the list, it's uh, like an array. So we have a, a list of elements. OK, and I will focus a little bit uh, uh, on it because we are going to use lists and typers in our model. So for example, I have here a list called the students. Uh, that is a list of uh, names of the student, okay? And uh, here I can output the whole list, as you see here, when I said print the whole uh, st uh, list uh, output. When I access one element in this list by passing the index zero, so only Fatima uh, will be output because it is in the index zero. So in Python, we start indexing from zero. OK, so the index of the last element will be size minus one, which is three in our case. And I changed it to Lucene. So we change the content of the list by this statement. OK, so as you see here, after I changed a J to Lucene, if I output the list again, I will see Lucene in a state of a J. So those examples, you can see them at home. You can change the values uh, of them and rerun, and you are going to see how they will be changed. OK. So also, at the end, we have uh, also concept called uh, tuples. Tuples are very similar to the list, but uh, the difference between it and the list that uh, they can't be changed. So the tuples, once you define them, you can't change them. For example, this statement uh, will, if I will execute it, it will produce an error. Okay, this statement means changing, changing a value in a tuples will produce an error. Okay, so uh, of course, uh, this is a very basic statement. If you want also to learn Python, you have to learn more statements, but we focused on those ba basic statements because we cannot create the model without learning just a few basics, at least statements. The last thing that we are going to talk about is unpacking tuples. Unpacking tuples. If you have a tuple, like this tuple, for example, okay, because we are going to use it in our model. This uh, tuple, it includes lots of elements, OK? If I want to assign each element to a variable, it will take lots of time. x equal data 0, y equal data 1, z equal data 3, OK? It will take lots of time. So instead, we have uh, something called unpacking tuples. Just you can put the variables and you put commas between them and here the name of the tuples as you see here the name of the tuple is data so automatically python will assign the first value to the first uh, variable so here 10 to the x uh, 20 to y 30 to z 40 to w and as you see here here is the output when i output x y 
ZW. So uh, this is the file. You already have it. You can train it at home. You can ask us about it. You can change the values and run it and see uh, what will happen once you run. OK, so um, as I told you, those are uh, the basic uh, statements we have here in kernel. Uh, restart and run all. OK, what will happen? It will run all the cells okay as you remember here we had an error why we had an error because we only run one cell okay but when you so when you run one cell here he did not know from where he got name okay so run here will run only one cell okay but so for that, be careful for the first time for, for the first time we are going uh, to run all because now I already run it all. Now he already no name. He will not now give me an error when I press on run. But for the first time when you open the file and you have, for example, in this cell <coughs> variables related to a previous cell. So for the first time, run all. How we run all from kernel, restart and run all. OK. OK, so this is uh, an introduction to Python. Let's go now start with our first what machine learning model. OK, so we will start from scratch. We don't need this file anymore. OK. So uh, as I told you, we'll start from scratch, but I'm going to do some steps before I will create a folder. OK. And I will put inside this folder uh, the data that I'm going to use it in my machine learning model. OK, so uh, usually the data that we are using in machine learning model is a CSV file. So if you have, for example, a database, it would be better to export it uh, to CSV file. So then you can use it in machine learning uh model okay uh before also uh, starting uh writing code don't think that okay directly we can go and start uh, writing code we have to learn the steps for creating machine learning uh model or application okay so let's see the machine learning steps <coughs> first we have to import the data. OK, you told me, OK, Miss, you directly you already sent us a data. OK, I sent you a data as a CSV file, <clears throat> but you have to import it to your model. OK, so we have to use some statement to import it. Don't worry at all because we have some libraries that will help us. The library that will help us in importing the data is called pandas. So Python already has some uh, uh, very useful libraries. Uh, pandas is one of the very useful library. The pandas is a data analysis library that provide a concept called data frame. What is data frame? Data frame is uh, a two dimensional data structure very similar to excel sheet you can select multiple columns multiple lines uh, delete them uh, do anything with them very very useful uh, also we have also a numpy library also very uh, useful library it will provide us with multi-dimensional array uh, Matplotlib. Matplotlib is also a very useful library. Uh, using it, you can create plot and charts. Scikit-learn library. Scikit-learn library is very, very popular, uh, especially in machine learning projects. Okay, because it provides us with the implemented uh, uh, methods and algorithms that we are going to use it to create our model. So today we are going to use 
pandas for data analysis for importing our data and scikit-learn to uh, use uh, the, uh, the implemented algorithms like a decision tree. Okay, so the steps. Import data. So I have to write the statement that will help me import data. This data, the CSV file, clean the data. Okay, the, so the second step and also very important step is cleaning the data. How do I clean the data? Uh, if you have, for example, uncompleted, uncompleted data, um, some fields are not filled, uh, or for example, you have repeated data, all these data should be removed, okay? Because if you fed your model with th those data, it, it will not be that much accurate. It will sometimes provide you or produce incorrect results. So cleaning data, then splitting the data into two segments, training and testing set. Also very important step. Okay, the data, the whole data that we are going to fed our model with should be splitted before. Why should be splitted? Because we have to reserve portion of this data to test, to make sure that our model is working properly. So at least I will have something about 20% of the data for just testing. I want to test my model. If he gave me the same result of this portion of data, that means, okay, my model is working properly. We will see that. Create a model. Okay, we prepared the data. We splitted it, creating a model. Very easy. Already everything in our hands, everything is provided just call those methods, just use those libraries. So don't worry at all. Train our model. Okay, if you created a model without a training, it was the, the meaning of training it, giving input to it with, uh, with the result. So he will learn, he will learn patterns from this input. So if we created model without training it, we will not get any uh, useful from this model. So train our model, also very easy and just call a method then very useful uh, step which is making predictions and evaluation okay this is not the end of a story creating model and fedding model with data we have to see if our model is working properly okay so i know now maybe you will not remember any step don't worry, we are going to work step by step and we are going to use a, a very simple uh, machine learning project. Okay, I will assume that I'm going to create uh, a machine learning model for an online music show. So, for example, I'm going to create online music show that will sell the music, songs, something like that. So I will use machine learning. Why? Because what I'm planning to do, whenever someone log in to my application and <clears throat> when he log in, he will provide me with his age and his gender. So what I will do using machine learning, using machine learning, I will predict what kind of a music this person will like. Okay, so instead of showing him all the kind of music, I will predict using machine learning which kind of music this person will like. So in this case, I will increase the sales, okay? Let's see how I will do that. So as I told you, I have here a folder. You can put it whenever you want. Just include the data that I already sent to you. We will see the content of the, this data, but we are going to see it in Jupyter. You can also hear double click and see the data is the same. <clears throat> so here is Jupyter. Be, be careful to go to a specific folder. So desktop. So what the meaning again of this folder? Music project. So we will go to music project. <clears throat> So as you see here, 
already this file is included here, data.csv. What we are going to do, we are going to create our for, first uh, project. So you can name it Hello World Machine Learning. You can name it first project. So it should be, oh, of course, it should be meaningful name, but because it's your first project, so you can name it first project. I named it project one in the file that I sent you. OK, <clears throat> so we have first project. What we have to do, going back to steps, <clears throat> import the data. How can I import the data? Don't forget that I'm in the same folder, so directly I can access the data. What are the statements that I'm going to write? Import pandas as pd. <clears throat> this is import the pandas library and I will refer to it as PD to make it easier. Instead of writing pandas, pandas, I will now write PD. Okay, <clears throat> I did not import the data yet. I only imported the library that called pandas. Okay, now I have to import the data. It would be better to put the space between importing the libraries and the statements of the project. <clears throat> okay, how I will do that? dot read underscore csv if you are not sure that this is exactly the name of the method what you can do you can just click on tab okay and he will give you the allowable options that you have okay so sometimes you use it to make sure that you did not write any uh, uh, method in incorrect way Okay, read CSV because I'm already in the same folder as I told you. I can directly put the name. <clears throat> be careful about the case because uh, Python is case sensitive, and be careful to put it into two single quotes or double quotation. Okay, this method will return a data frame as we said before. Where is this data frame? I have to save it. I have to hold it in a variable. So how I will assign it to a variable, I will put it in the left side and using equal sign. OK, what the name of the variable you are going to put? It should be meaningful. For example, music data, music data. OK, something that refer that this is the data that I'm going to use and maybe it's related to music. I will use data to make it uh, very simple. OK, so I have a variable called data. OK, to make sure maybe for some reason uh, I could not import it uh, in a correct way. Uh, so to make sure that I have imported the data correctly, we can just write print data or can we can inspect the data by just writing data. Correct. Congratulations we finished the first step which is importing data so as you see here this is the data so now just writing the name of the variable you are inspecting the variable you are seeing the content of the variable as you see here so this is the content of the data frame let's take a look of our data how it will help me in our model our data includes three columns this column 0 1 2 is generated by python so it's only to declare that this is the first row, second row, something like that. Don't care about it. <clears throat> My real data is age, gender, and genre. This is how I told you before, when I want to create my music shop, what I want to do, I will let people log in with their age and gender, and my model will predict. It will show me rock or hip hop or just that depending on my age and my gender. OK, so how my model will learn? Because I will feed him with those data. I will tell my model that 
men, because here gender is one, means men. Men from age 15 to age 19 will like croc, okay? As you see here, I did not include all the values. For example, 16 is not included. The age 16 is not included. The age 18 is not included. Okay, so I'm just putting some of the data that I gathered. By the way, it's not real data. Okay, it's uh, uh, presenting data, so it's not real data, but it's just used to uh, create this model. In real life, it should be real data. Okay, because we need our model to give us a real result. Okay, so uh, here, let's say men from age uh, 15 to 19 will like rock music. Men, because here gender one, from age 20 till 25 will like hip hop. <clears throat> and uh, men from uh, 26, till uh, uh, 30 will like jazz and so on. From 31 to 37 will like classical, like women, because here gender zero means woman. Women from age 15 to age 19 will like pop, from age 20 to age uh, 25 will like dance and so on, okay? This is the data that we have. Now we only we only imported the data. The next step is cleaning the data. What is the meaning of cleaning data? Cleaning data means uh, removing all the data that uh, is uh, repeated or uh, uncompleted or uh, uh, that includes empty values. All those data, we don't need our model to take them because it will create um, wrong result at the end it will it's not uh, correct data so as you see here to make it simple for you i did not include such data so cleaning data now already done because i don't have such data okay <clears throat> then what we are going to do we are going to split our data split our data to training data and testing data what the meaning of that? We have, for example, even if you have 1000 record, okay, you want to create a model and give this 1000 record to it as an input, you have to reserve, for example, around 200 records of it for testing to make sure if your, record, if your model is working properly, you have to use data that you already know their answers Okay, you got it? Okay, but also to make it easier for you, for the first project, I will not split it. I will let you create a very simple project at the beginning, then the next project, I will split them to what? To training data and testing data. But in all cases, before this step, before splitting it to training and testing, we have first to split it to input and output. What is the input here? The input is the age and gender, and the output is gender. How I can, how I will let my model learn? I will tell my model the age 14 and gender 1, this is the input. He will like gender of rock. Woman, for example, <coughs> who's a uh, age is 15 we like pop so pop is the output then later later after creating my model and after training it what i will do i will start making prediction i will tell him my model please there is a new user new user, user logged in he is a man or male sorry and he is uh, 22 years old please tell me which kind of music should we display to him? What do you think? This is what I will ask my model. And he is going to predict what, which kind of music he is going to show him depending on this data that he already had. Okay, 
So if you remember at the beginning of this workshop, I told you that you may surprise how Amazon will know the suitable shirt or the colors or shoes that you are going to like because he trained a lot. He has lots of data that he can predict uh, the correct colors or uh, uh, groceries or anything that you are going to buy. OK, let's go back to our model. Now I'm going to split data to input and output. Don't worry, very easy. How? Data, which is the name of the variable of the data frame, dot drop. Drop will remove, for example, specific column. I want to remove the genre because I want for the input age and gender. OK, drop. Drop what? <coughs> I will drop column, correct? Mm -hmm. So columns equal genre. OK, look, don't worry. This method will not edit the original data frame. It will return a new data frame without genre. So the original data frame, which is data, will not be touched. OK, I have data, the original, but the return value is all these table without genre. What I'm going to do, I have to save it in a variable. Again, you can name it whatever you want, but by convention in machine learning projects, we name it X capital letter. So X capital letter is referred to the input. OK, so. Before continuing, always it would be better to inspect our data. Maybe you misspelled something. OK, great. So the input data has been created successfully. In the same way, I want to create the output data, the output data, which is only the column genre. So uh, also I can do data, but now I will not use drop. I will use directly the square bracket that will give me values in a given column. What the given column? I need genre. I will put or I will save this in Y small letter. So by convention, the output data will be stored in Y small letter. Again, again, we inspect our data. Perfect. So also the output here has been created successfully. OK, OK, so we imported data. We split it to input output. As I told you, I will not split it to test and the training for the next project. Now I will create a model. OK, I will create a model. Creating a model, if you want to implement the algorithm, it will take too much time and uh, it's time consuming and it needs lots of effort. No need all of thing, those things. We have a wonderful library called scikit-learn. So from sklearn, sklearn is um, let's say a package pro provided by a scikit-learn library. So from it, there is a tree. A tree is a module inside this package. Uh, so from sklearn.tree import decision tree classifier. So what is the decision tree classifier? The decision tree classifier is a class inside this module that implements the decision tree um, algorithm. Okay. If you for now don't know the concept of class or module or package, don't worry about that. Let's say I have this block of code unit, block of code that includes the method that I'm going to use it to create my model. I don't need to create this method from scratch. It's already included here. What I did here, I used tab because sometimes you will misspell something, you will write something also to make sure that, okay, Everything is working properly. OK, how to create my model? It's very easy. How just to create an object of this class, just to create an object of this class. And I know if you don't know now uh, the concept of 
object or class, don't worry. Let's say, let's take a copy of this class. That's enough for now to understand. So model, why I named it model? You can name it whatever you want, but the, the meaningful name, what I'm going to create a model, okay? So I give it a name model. It is equivalent to decision tree cl classifier. So congratulations, we created a model. That's all, the, only those two statements. From sklearn tree import decision tree classifier and model is equivalent to decision tree classifier, okay? So we created a model. But our model now knows nothing, okay? If I let, uh, if I asked him, for example, I have uh, a female whose age is 20, please tell me which kind of music she knows. He will tell me, I don't know, because he knows nothing, okay? I did not train it yet. How I will train it, which is the next step, also very easy. Just model dot fit. Okay. Also, if you are not sure of the name of the method, just press on tab and he will let you know. Tell me, what do you think? What do you think the input for this method? Is it the input data or output data? Which one? Again, what I'm doing with this method, I'm feeding my model. I'm let it train. What do you think? Yes, the both. The input and the output, because he is going to learn the male, which his age is blah, 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 and his gender uh, uh, male, he will like, for example, this kind of music. So he, he has to learn from the input and the output. So from X capital letter and Y small letter. So now my model is trained. Yes, only one statement. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, what do you think I'm going to do? I have a model. I have a trained model, so I will do prediction. I will ask him questions, okay? So I will, I, now I can, for example, I will use it in my uh, music shop, okay? So let's ask him, let's predict, predict now that a new, uh, uh, sorry, let's pretend that new user now logged in, okay? Let's say that his age, Okay, to, to, to know exactly what to ask him, let's first inspect the data. Okay, this is the original data. The original data, let's ask him about an age which is not included here. For example, as you see here, the age 16 is not included, correct? So let's ask him uh, um, if, uh, a male with 16 years old logged in and also let's take an example of female also 16 is not included in the female let's see if he will guess that this female will like pop and let's see if he will guess that this male will like rock okay so how i can predict that so very easy model dot predict and also use the tab <clears throat> predict will take two dimensional array because sometimes you will pass to it a complete uh, column okay or a, a complete uh, table okay so it's take two dimensional array in the first uh, Internal array, what I will tell him, it's just like a record. You are fed, you are asking him about what? The uh, male with 16 years old. So I will ask him about uh, 16, okay, because it should be the same, 16 and ma male. And the other thing that I want to ask him about is 
Um, let's try either 16 or something. For example, uh, a woman with 33 years old. You can ask as many as you want. So 33. Uh, a woman, OK? So OK. Um, how to know that he uh, he will how to know his prediction let's assign it to a variable named prediction and let's output on, on the screen okay so what do you think look he told me rock which is the correct answer, and he told me classical music, which is also correct answer because women from age 30 will like classical music. So, uh, okay. Do you think, dear, that this is enough? Do you think that this is enough for production? Do you think that we asked him only two questions or three questions or four questions is enough? Sure, it's not enough. It's not enough to say that our model is accurate. It's not enough at all. So also, in fact, we don't know the actual result. We don't know that exactly this woman will really like uh, classical uh, music or this man will like rock music. For that, what I told you, for that, we should reserve 20% or more from the data for testing and 80% from the data for training. And that's what we are going to do in the next project. So now you, you finished the first project, you created a, a machine learning project that can predict uh, results. Congratulations. For the second project, because we don't have enough time to create it from scratch, I already included the first project and second project in the file that I uh, gave you, but let me directly open it and explain it to you quickly. <clears throat> so project two is already uh, included. So what we are going to do, file, close, and that I think now you already, uh, you already uh, knew the correct concept. So just, just, I will go quickly on it. OK, so please here I only will uh, split the data. So I will use the, those library to split the data. I will split it to uh, training and testing. OK, so this is the way. And here I will only fade my model with the training data. And here at the end, I will see the accuracy by uh, comparing by uh, the predictions and by uh, the testing data. OK, as you see here, uh, it's uh, uh, the score is 0.75%. So 75% it's uh, a good, but it could be improved. Uh, and also whenever you run it, OK, you may get here another result because he will pick he will pick a volume uh, or uh, let's say a part of the data randomly for testing. OK, um, I hope that this workshop was helpful for you. Um, I hope that we have more time so I can explain more uh, in details to you, but we are restricted in time. So uh, I hope now that uh, you enjoyed in this workshop and uh, just a reminder, a quick reminder that if we are going to create uh, a machine learning model, we have first to import the data. We have second to uh, clean the data, split the data, create a model, then 
fed a model with data, then evaluate the model, and then at the end, if it uh, was accurate, so I can then use this model and do predictions. Okay, so I finished now. If you wish to ask any questions, you can start. Uh, but Mam Archna, you can continue uh, with the, um, if you wanted to uh, tell the student about the next uh, uh, workshop that we are going to have. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so Thank much, Lucy. Lucy. That was really interesting, interesting. Uh, session, uh, session of learning. learning. And uh, uh, the, oh, this was just uh, now uh, to the application. application. Um, uh, Lucy, can, uh, can you mute? Yeah, because I was hearing my own voice. So, yeah, I was telling there are a lot of applications of machine learning. I mean, you will be seeing uh, as simple as a recommender system in, for example, uh, when you watch something on Netflix, you know, uh, or maybe something like uh, detecting whether a person is wearing a mask or not. So there are enormous amount of applications of uh, machine learning. Speak of any field for that matter. In fact, researchers have proved that um, a machine can uh, perform a surgery with more precision than 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 an actual doctor. So there are n number of uh, very interesting applications of uh, machine learning in every field. Uh, so that was really wonderful session by Ms. Lucine. We are open to any questions. Uh, anyone has any questions? Please feel free to unmute yourself and ask. Any questions, anyone? All right. Hello? Yes. Um, I had a question. Um, so can the model only interpolate and predict values within the range that uh, of our data set? Uh, no, actually there are different types of uh, machine learning models that we have. For example, uh, what happens in supervised learning, we provide uh, uh, data along with a label. All right, so we tell, for example, if uh, this is a mobile, this is a laptop, so we, we every piece of data is labeled. So the predictions that are made by the model will be among those labeled data. We call them as classes, and that's a problem precisely called as classification. However, there are other methodologies, for example, unsupervised you know, uh, training. In unsupervised training, the data is not labeled. OK, we don't know in advance what could be the, the possible output. So the range of output that is produced by the model or the predictions is, is really vast. So then then there are something like a re reinforcement learning. So there are different models, so not necessarily it could uh, it can predict something which you know, the, which is which it's labeled for. It could be an entirely unlabeled data and we have different unsupervised models for those. Thank Does that you. answer your question? Yes, ma'am. We have clustering. We have a lot of uh, other unsupervised, you know, learning. If you have heard of clustering, any other question? Since we had very less time, so we uh, have covered only supervised learning, basic model. In that, and like uh, Miss Lucine used decision tree algorithm. So like that, there, there are a lot of them. There are, for example. SCG, for example, Bran, for example, fuzzy logic, for example, uh, uh, adaptive neurophysic techniques. There are lots of them which could be used. And similarly, we have a lot of techniques that could be used for unsupervised uh, machine learning as well. I have one more question. Yes, dear. Um, so if I was deciding between computer science and software, software engineering as a major. Um, could you give me any advice on what to choose and what's the difference? To choose between computing science and software engineering? Yes. All right. Uh, see, in software engineering, the focus is more on, uh, you know, developing softwares or developing applications, right? However, in computing science, the focus is general, like you will be, uh, your focus will be towards 
for example, computer networks along with, uh, for example, operating systems and you know other techniques also. So if you are very clear that you want to be a developer in future, then software engineering is the right course for you. But if you're not clear, you would still want some time to explore and then maybe you can take up an option of computing science. But if you see in the long terms, there is, there is uh, for example, if you want to go for masters or you know things like that, you can take up any of these courses. The, the only difference uh, if you speak about the course structure are few modules, which are, for example, statistics and maths modules and all those things. Right. But if you're very clear that development is something we know which I want to do in future, so then software engineering is the right course for you. But if you are not sure, you would want to go in, for example, networking, you want to be a be a you know network architect or things like that, then you can opt for uh, com uh, computing science in general. OK, thank you. Ms. Any other questions? All right, then so. Uh, that was the session for the day. The next session will be about uh, working with big data, right? Uh, big data is increasingly important in today's commercial landscape and as a data scientist, for example, specializing in big data will help basically companies making sense of, you know, large amount of data which could be structured or unstructured, right? And uh, what data scientists do is that they try to make sense of that data and try to use insights in that data so that we can help companies to make a quicker and wiser decisions, right? Uh, so the objectives of next session are to develop an understanding of big data, learn the applications of big data, and also how learn how to handle the uh, you know structured database. All right. I think the detailed contents have already been shared with you. We will also try to cover some uh, hands on exercises on SQL worksheets and I'm the presenter for the next session, right? I think I've already introduced myself. I look forward seeing uh, seeing you all in the next session and I hope we'll have an ama another amazing session uh, which will be working with big data. All right. As I said, the attendance is mandatory for all the sessions for, uh, you know, certificate. So uh, if you want to get the certificate, you have to attend all the sessions. And I'm sure today's session was very exciting and useful for all of you. So you will also be looking forward to another section session. And so are we. All right. Thank you, everybody, for taking time in the weekend and uh, attending today's session. I really, really hope that it was useful for you. Uh, see you all in the next session. Then bye bye, take care and stay safe. Bye bye all. Thank you for watching. See you in the next workshop.